us, will revive us, and will make us shine as light even to our world. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We are thank God for his grace and mercy upon us. We are uh, the past two uh, Sundays, we started this series on spiritual power and gift for the body of Christ. Mommy has taken us to um, to the first two two lessons in Unit One. We have three units, as, as we see in the Sunday School Manual. The first unit is God's Spirit and Power. Unit two is on God gives, telling, talking about God gives gift, uh, give, give purposefully. And unit three talks about God gives vocal gifts and even more. So we are still in unit one, talking about God's Spirit and Power. And... We've taken the first two lessons on, on what the spiritual gifts are. We've also looked at the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God. The sp Holy Spirit as the one who gives the power of God. As the power of God. When we talk about God's power in action on our world today, we're talking about the move of the Holy Spirit. So when we say the Holy Spirit about the Holy Spirit is God in our world today, the one who is in operation. So today we're looking at lesson three, and our topic says the promise of spiritual power for us, the promise of spiritual power for us. We we'll start by looking at our memory verse. I know it's not on the screen. It's, is it on, on there? If it's not there, then we can look at our manual. Uh, verse. Um, memory verse is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Okay, let's say it together. One, two, go. But you will receive power. And the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. So this, I think this um, scripture, it, talk, it, it starts from where Jesus was talking about, talking to his disciples that they should tarry until they be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think uh, verse Acts chapter sorry Acts chapter 1 I read from verse verse 4 from verse 4 it says and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now on. Now, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I don't know if anything strikes us, especially with that memory scripture. to start from where they are living, yes.
Jessica. Maybe a strategy or a method. No. Amen. Uncle. Yeah. Amen. I appreciate all the the views. Yeah, yeah. Some are mixing it up. Amen. <coughs> yeah, welcome, Auntie Zena, man. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Today we are looking at the topic, the promise of the Holy Spirit for us believers. The promise of, okay, here yeah, I said the promise of spiritual power for us. Christians. So, um, is is one thing is uh, I mean I think the work begins with the knowledge that God has promised us spiritual power, and the promise is for every one of us. Yeah, and and knowing it is very important, and then asking for it, believe, pursuing it is another thing. But we are looking at the promise. Of spiritual power, and one of the things that have been highlighted by everyone from the memory scripture we look at in um, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, is the importance of us um, having the power of God. Yeah, it's not uh, evangelism, we want to witness or really be the hand of God or change the dark the world we are living in. It's a dark world, yes, there are different powers, evil powers in operation. And as God's children, we cannot afford to be weak. Yeah. We cannot afford to be weak. We must be strong. We must be strong. Uh, but that promise is not, it's for everybody. But there is also something to do. And, and that's one of the things. I think during the week I was looking at some of our devotional thoughts. And one of the devotional thoughts 
that uh, I looked at, which I also read to my children this morning, yeah, is uh, in Isaiah chapter 40. So if you look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31, let's read them and see what the Bible says. Amen. Yeah, one of the things I was reflecting on, even when I was reading this, is, is uh, when I was reading this uh, devotional thought, was mostly on some of the challenges we have in our world, and which we Christians are also seem to be victim of. Yes, issues like mental health and all of that. Yeah. In fact, that was one of the things that came to me. Because at, at some point in my life, I, I, I actually experienced mental health challenge. And, and one of the things that came to mind was that um, as a Christian, we are not supposed to, it's not that uh, we are not supposed to be victims in life. Yeah. We go through, yes, we go through because we are humans. Yes, we are human. But then, that's one area, but there are so many other areas. Area of mental health, or that challenge, the trouble that goes with it. Not being able to carry it is also a sign of weakness. It's a sign of weakness, spiritual weakness in us. Because as Christians, we are meant to be strong. If you, and one of the things that, uh, sometimes I look at myself and I, I consider myself that I seem to be weak right now but i used to think i think about back in then back in the days when I actually was when i was a young christian when i i gave time to prayer and some of the things i used to do wake up early and also look at some of my friends then who it was like a constant practice that morning early morning they wake up they pray and and sometimes these days i find myself i'm struggling to do that do you think it's uh, even, and I notice that it's not just in my prayer life, even in my study life, it affects my academic life, my, even my work. It tells us that the ability to do most of these things, most of these things are challenging. The little things we think you, just, you are just able to do, don't think it, it, you're just able to do it. It's God that gives strength. And God helped me, I think, when I was, because this morning after we prayed, you see, was still sleeping, Salem and I, we, so as, as when it was, at, as normally she's the one that would say, praise the Lord. <laughs> I told her, okay, she said, she's not, she won't be able to say it. I said, why? Sometimes she, when she doesn't want to do something, she said, no, she said, I'm tired. I said, no, we just <laughs> read about God gives strength to you. And I tried to encourage her. Come on, you have strength. Has God to give you strength, and then she responded. So, so in that that little example with a little child, but that's also how it is with us. Coming to God, He has promised us. This is a promise He has given us, but they are for those who do what? Wait. Who do? Wait. We have to wait on the Lord, and that's when we receive that strength. We receive that ability. And when, when God's strength is in you, you will see yourself, you are doing, it, you are doing things beyond the natural. And even while you are being, doing it, you won't recognize that. It, you might even not you might think that it's your strength. Until when you stop relying, waiting, and then you want to do those things, you will see that it was never your strength. Okay. I think uh, we can answer what is waiting. It's a good question. Let's break it down more. So what do we mean to wait on the Lord? What do we do when we are waiting? Do we just wake up in the morning, 
and do what and meditate or what or we just sit in one place is what yeah For, for you to wait, that's another point. Yes. For you to wait, you must have faith. You must have believed. You must have believed. Yes. Exactly. You must have believed. Yeah. So there's also a problem if we are not waiting. It could mean that we don't have faith anymore. That's another point. We must Wait. We wait. When we wait, what do we do? I believe we, we all know this. Yeah. Is what? Okay. <laughs> so what does it mean? Okay, let me hear from us. What do we do while waiting?
Oh, Lloyd. Amen. So, back to the question. I think Pastor said, uh, where do we wait? Uh, I just, let's just read uh, Acts chapter 2, I think verse 1. What we are they doing? The Bible said, when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Uh, I mean, this is a very short description, but we can interpret what they were gathered doing. What were they doing? What do we think they were doing? They were in one place, which means they were fellowshipping and they were praying together consistently. Yeah, it didn't say we are, they were psychic. They were fasting. I think chapter 2, uh, if you want to look at Jesus' instruction was in chapter 1. Chapter 1 was where Jesus instructed them. Uh, that's before then. I think verse uh, 4 or 5 or so. They were in one place. It's a very short psalm, Psalm 133. If you're there, you can read it. Yeah, go on, sir. It's a practical topic, so yeah. so I know uh, I know we are supposed to cover to follow this, but it's something practical. Yeah.
all the churches together. Unite to work together. Even Rehab Bonke, when he comes to Nigeria, that's what happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. Churches come together and and we see miracle happen. Miracles happen so, so easily. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I remember one of the occasions in Portacos when Bonke came to Portacos. All the churches, including my local church, all the ministers, bishops and all of them, they gathered together. They worked yeah. together. And and you could hear this minister, you could hear them, you could hear the power of God at work. You could hear people who were lame, people who were deaf and dumb, they started speaking. So, the power of unity. Depending on God. That's what the scripture is saying. He gives power to the weak. And dependent on him. He said even the strong, even you, they grow, those who have no mind, the strong, they, will, they grow weary. That's what he's talking about. But those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. No other way. And you and you pray unity as well.
Beispiel. Ja. Walking together. Das war ja Whisky. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We are soldiers. That's the key. A soldier in a war front, you cannot afford to live like a civilian. Yeah. <laughs> to live like a civilian. You must be alert all the time. And each time there, there is attack or there is mass uh, casualty in the army or whatever, there is always someone or something that has neglected what they're supposed to do. May that not happen to us in Jesus' name. Yeah, I know our time is spent, but I just wanted to touch on briefly on some of the highlights of what the topic is about. It's, um, the promise of spiritual power. We've already talked about uh, waiting on the Lord as important. But one other message that we need to learn is also captured in um, when we look at the promise of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Let's have a look at Joel chapter 2. We look at verse 28 to 29. Please, if you're there, just read. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Okay, I'm there. Okay, sir. Praise God. Yeah, the, it's uh, amazing that this uh, prophecy was given in the Old Testament. It's something really promising. 
Uh, somehow the book of Jude started with judgment. Uh, if you look at chapter 1, talking about the land being laid waste. Um, and also there's the promise of mourning, that the land will mourn, the land of Israel, Judah, they will mourn. And then in chapter 2, there is also the day of the Lord, talking about, of course, there's a fearful day. And then it went on to talk about there was a call for repentance and there's a promise of restoration. <coughs> so, and particularly in this verse, say God's spirit will be poured out. What does it say here? He said it will come to pass in that day. This, the time that is being referred to here is not the time of the Old Testament. But let's see what he said. He said, he will pour out, I said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. He talks about your sons and daughters. What will they do? They will prophesy. Your old men, they will dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And even extend that beyond your sons and daughters, the old men and the young men. It went on to even talk about the, the, the men servants and the maid servants. Talking about that, uh, he said, and, and also men servants, uh, you know, men servants, I will pour out my spirit on those days. So God is promising here that there will be a time when he pours out his spirit on all flesh. But during the Old Testament, during the time when of the, ecclesiast uh, uh, of the, the ecclesiastical uh, or Levitical priesthood, during the time of Moses, the spirit of God was what? was not poured out on all. That's unique to say that it wasn't, it was referring to a time that was to come. Praise God. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God was reside, was, was poured on certain individuals. So it wasn't on everyone. It was on certain individuals for a particular purpose. And we will see that even in, in uh, I think, in Numbers chapter 11, you see, talking about, let's just touch there. Let me see a few verses from Numbers chapter 11. So here it talks about, if it beg begins with the people complaining about, about what God was giving them. God was being nice to uh, providing for them, and they were murmuring. To the point that Moses got so fed up. And the Bible said in verse, is it in verse 16? So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers. Bring them to the tabernacle meeting. Verse uh, 17 said, Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take, take of the spirit that is on you and we put on put the same on them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you. Praise God. Yes. He has to share it. So Moses had the gift, the spirit of God and that's what God used him. But the spirit of God was not on the rest of the people. The spirit of God God said he was going to take part of Moses' spirit, the spirit of Moses, and give to certain people. Who will do what? Who will, who will share the body with him? So the spirit of the Lord in the Old Testament came to particular people for a particular task. Yes. When God wanted to do something, want to use you, God will pour out his spirit on you. But that's not what his jewel is talking about. Praise God. Joel is talking about a different time when the Spirit of God will be poured out on all flesh, on your sons and daughters, on your young men and women, on even on your men servants and maid servants. There is no restriction. And you see so many examples. Time will not permit us to go through all of them. In, um, I think in Exodus chapter 31, verse 3, God talked about putting his spirit on, on a particular man. What's his name again? For, let me, let me just read that. Exodus chapter 31, verse 3. He 
said to design artistic work to work in gold, in silver, and in cotton. Okay, okay, verse 3 says, and I have filled him. He's talking about a man named Bazalel. Okay, Bazalel, that's the name of the man. He said, verse 3 says, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic work. So, for the artistic work, the furniture work, God had to put his spirit on a particular individual to do the, that work of Calvary in the house of the Lord among the people. So there was, there was the spirit of God given. Even when we look at in Judges, talking about uh, Judges chapter, is it chapter 3 verse 10, Othniel. So these are some examples. Chapter 3 verse 10, the Bible talks about the spirit of the Lord came on him and he judged, okay, it's talking about Othniel. Okay, if you read it, please, also talking about Othniel. And he judged Israel and he went out to war and the Lord delivered Kushan uh, Rashem, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. So most of the judges, not just the uh, Othniel, Samson, all the people that God used in the old, God sent his spirit on them to, to do the task to carry out the assignment he needed. But God was talking here about a time when he will pour out his spirit on all flesh, on all flesh. And that is what was, was fulfilled in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when God poured out the spirit of, his spirit on the disciples. That's uh, talking about the first part of, the, of our study, which talked about the promise of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament was also the promise that we've already read in the book of Acts, our memory verse, chapter 1, verse 8, when the, when the Lord um, promised his Holy Spirit. Then in, in Luke chapter 24, verse 48 to 49, let's just touch on that. Luke 24. This was after the, resur the resurrection of Jesus. We normally call, refer to this period as the resurrection Sunday. So what happened here in verse 20, 20, 48? Let's see what happened. This was after Jesus resurrected. And even read before that, before the, that, from verse 44. So then he said to them, these are the words which I have spoken to you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and the prophets. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written of the, thus it was, it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and, some, and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in this, here in Jerusalem until you are endued from on high. I think we've already talked about this. We should wait. This was the commandment he gave to the disciples to tarry. To tarry some some things because I was trying to listen to Derek Prince on where he was trying to distinguish some distinguish the, some of the beliefs of some churches, some of our churches, which he he, he said they were partly wrong. He talked about some believe that at, at when we become born again, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't need to pray for the Holy Spirit again. Why some the Pentecostals? He talked about the Pentecostals believe uh, in the uh, feel it, the Holy Spirit power as more of when the Holy Ghost, when you are baptized, Pentecostal power. But he tried to distinguish that that as at birth, uh, when we become born again. Um, I think I was trying to look for a place where he actually 
where Jesus actually breathed on them. I'm looking for that scripture. And I enjoy us after the resurrection. Yeah. When Jesus breathed on them, they will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you see the disciples here, he breathed on them. They received the Holy Spirit. But why did, what, that was before his ascension. So I will talk about here the, the life of the Holy Spirit. It comes on us when we become born again. As Christ breathed into them the life of God, it comes. That's the Holy Spirit produces that life in us. But to distinguish it from, I don't know, Pastor, if you wanted to say something on that. Yeah, yeah. Or breathe. Yeah. So the resurrection that we are talking about is the breathing of the Holy Spirit on us. And that's when we get the Holy And that's when we become born again, yeah. So when we become born again, we receive the life of God. And that is the spirit of God. He, he gives us that life. But there is another occasion when, which is what we are also talking about, when he promised, I, I in one, Acts 1 verse 8, his promise is what? We will receive the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit coming as? To give us what? Power. Power power and that power is the purpose is to what witness for us to be witnesses so there is the life of God which you receive when we go when we become born again and there is the power which we which has been promised to all of us the power to what in the old testament power to prophesy power to dream dreams to see visions and in the new testament that power is, is promised, that power to evangelize, to represent Christ. To represent Christ. And, it's, and, and uh, one, of the things, um, one, of the, one of the things I also learned, because when you see a man of God or someone or an evangelist stand somewhere and he's preaching the gospel, and people, everyone is listening to him, do you think it's by his, his oratory? It's not by his spoken word or his wisdom. There is spiritual power that is enveloping that environment. And that's the power we are asking of. The power to witness. The power of the Holy Spirit. When that power is on us, we can take charge. We can be on our knees and take charge of this community. And when we go out to evangelize, everyone will, you will see that people will be giving their life to Christ. And that is what we are talking about. And that's what God has promised us. We are going to end here with our prayer. And uh, let's, just as uh, we reflected on, on waiting on the Lord. On his promise for power. Why don't you, I don't know, if, if you know you're not born, if you're not born again, ask God for that life. The life of God, the life of the, of the Holy Spirit. And if you know you're born again, the promise is for us to receive his power. Ask God for his power. I will also be asking for that.
and he does hear our prayers. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise. And thank you even for what we've read in the Bible as you commanded the disciples and they obeyed. And you sent forth your power on them. We pray that even today, as we respond, Lord, Holy Spirit, fill us. Empower us even to do your work. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Kadosh, 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 Kadosh is the Lamb of God, is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy of our praise. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Kadosh, 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 is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone, He alone is worthy of our praise. Kadosh, 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 oh, Kadosh, 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 is the Lamb of God, is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone, He alone is worthy of our praise. Worthy of all praise. 
Kadosh, 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 is the Lamb of God, is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. First it was fragrance, then it turns to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. First it was fragrance, first it was fragrance, then it turns to fire. Worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance, first it was fragrance, and then it turns fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance, first it was fragrance, then it turns, turns to fire. My worship is my weapon, my worship is my This is how I win my battles. This is how I win, 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 win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship breathes upon the earth. This is how I win, win, this, yeah, oh, oh, this is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship breathes upon the earth. This is how I win, win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship breathes upon the earth. This is how we win, win. This is how we win, win, win. This is how we win. Smoke of our worship, the smoke of my worship. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. This is how I win, 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 this is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship, oh, lift it up, lift it up. This is how I win, 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 hey. win, win, this is how I Smoke of my worship, yeah. oh, oh, oh. This is how I win, 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 yeah. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship, release upon the earth. This is how I win, win, win. Yeah, oh, oh. The smoke of my worship. Yeah. This is how I win. Oh, rabba, rabba, 
Shunduri bandye remendi anaya The smoke of my worship released upon the earth This is how, this is how I win, win, win This is how I win The smoke of my worship Oh, just lift your voice to Jesus. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, yeah. Lift your voice, lift your voice, raise a sound of worship to Jesus. Oh, Sing to him, sing to him. Kira babando rimandi ana na 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 ene ne. Shondo riba etende rimando na. Shondo riba etendi andare menteli ana. Shondo riba etere menti andai utundo rimantele. Kondori bandia, kondori bandia nere mente anana na oro 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 oro. Kira baba bandori mandia tenere menti da 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 ono. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Ha. Rimandona, hey. Rabandi katondona. Shinde rabadorosh. Kadosh, ha. Kadosh, 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 kadosh. Da 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 da. Worthy, 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 worthy. Holy, 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 holy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Holy, you are worthy. Holy, you are worthy of all the glory. Ishatarabadosh Kirabandora Mamandi Shiraba Baba 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 Baba
Ai, 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 We long for you, Lord. Kira ba 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 bandona, reme me 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 ndene, shondori ba etere menti antayo. Kitantori menti atondori mente ene. Aya, Cori Bandiana, Jesus, Woo. Jesus, Woo. Shata Rabba Baba Baba Badosh, Robo Boboya, Oh. Mama, 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 my head. Rabba, baba, no, remember, man. Oh, I, 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 you are glorious, you are radiant. I, 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 I. You are worthy of all praise, worthy of our adoration. Oh 
I pour, I pour it out to you. Praise like all. Jesus. To you I pour it out. To you I pour it out. I pour, I pour it out. Repete, Shondo Ramandiene, Shondi Atondona. I bore, I bore it out. Oh, Shantala Madoya. To you, I bore, to you, I bore it out. To you I pour it out, I pour, I pour it out to you.
bow yes we bow down and worship Yahweh we bow we bow we bow we bow down Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Mama as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. Say to yourself, I will not miss the blessing the Lord had for me today. Say it again in a different way. I will not miss all the blessing the Most High has for me today. Amen. Uh, 
I want us to stand up to read it together. If it's on the screen, we'll read on the screen. If it's not on the screen, we we'll read after me. Okay, it's on the screen. Thank you, our priest. Put the title of the sermon on there. Israel is transition is was in transition at, at this stage. Am I right? And there was a border line to cross over to the promised land. And here we hear God giving them certain instructions. The miracles of Egypt or the manna in the wilderness was it for generations? Hello? The manna that was raining in wilderness was it for generations? Does it last generations? How long did it last? Sorry? lasted a day, but uh, how long did it last? As long as they were in about 40, year, about 40 years. Well, after that, did it stop? And God is giving them st strategies to build for generational blessing. Say strategies, principles, for foundations, for generational blessings. For years we've been talking about generational causes, generational iniquity. But do you know God has a plan for you? See, God has a plan for me. A plan beyond my dreams. A plan that is bigger than my prayers. You believe it? Are you really sure you believe it? Because, you see, 
the God we serve, his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. When I'm thinking of blessing, I think of owning a house. But imagine a slave owning a mansion. Can you see the difficulty the Jews had from slavery? You spent 40 years in desert. The only food you had is this manna. And suddenly, you now, God is telling you, you are going into a land. You are going into a land that you, this slave boy, you now be possessing a m- mansion. You, this slave girl, you own orchards that you did not plant. You own acres of land that you will not have to plant yourself and they will be filled. Can you imagine the difficulty they will have? In Egypt, they have to slave to build mansion for Pharaoh. They have to cultivate lands. Their father's generations sweat to build houses to build mansions for Egyptians, to cultivate their lands. Now God is saying, you don't have to walk. When you get there, the house is already even filled with silver and gold. And are you going to believe what God is telling you today? Uh, God was telling me about somebody sitting down here. And that's what God was telling me. He said, our pastor, we can give you a salary of 11500 Be giving me what? Monthly. He didn't call it salary. We can just be giving us my 11500 But if I see the person now, or maybe I'll tell him later. But I don't want to so I'll tell the person later. You, you see, when you don't know what God asks for you, you begin to scramble for crumbs. But when people who know their God, the Bible says they will be what? They will be strong and do what? Do any of us, none of us are soldiers here. Do you know even in modern times there are still exploits? When soldiers go to war and they conquer a land, the treasure there belongs to them. Do you know that? And there is no negotiation about it. You talk of some uh, 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 gold and things that in Second World War, the, the, the Germans took from the Jews. Some paintings that work, work millions they took from the Jews. And so when God says, those who know their God shall be strong and do, do exploits, mean you will walk by, by the time you conquer the territory God is telling you to conquer by his power and spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, when people go to war, they need the spirit of God. When kings are going to war, they know it's by the spirit they win. But God is telling you, you do exploits. There are still exploits for you. Say, I see I have exploits too. Well, for you to believe it, let's open with me to Philippi, Philippi, no, Ephesians 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3, verse 20. I hope we have time to pray today. We are not yet in the psalm. I'm doing the promises. And the promise is, is able to, he said, can you enlarge your imagination? Oh, sit down. Write down. God, he said, I have a checkbook. And I want to make it open to you. Can you ask? How much? How much can you imagine? Oh, I want a life. How much? How much can you think? And he said, I'm going to top it. Beyond your dreams. Beyond your imagination. 
can God lie? And Titus said, we serve a God who cannot lie. I didn't hear him. Eh? So God is sitting you down not to say they dreaming. They dreaming is I'm exercising fertility. This is sitting before the most high. One who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. And he said, I want to do it for you. I was reading the Bible uh, where Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. And the translator said, the word ask there is that keep asking. He said, and I will give you, if they don't exist, I will create it for you. That's what exactly what that word is saying to us. If they don't exist, what will he do? He will create it. And now that we have this promise from the one who is able to do it, why will you not ask? What are the, what, what, how, how do you maintain this relationship? How do you maintain a pathway that can open the door to receive this abundance? Let's go back to that Deuteronomy and quickly we'll just be, look at the key words so that we will not miss it. And we see the love of God here. He doesn't want to miss it. Nor your children. Nor your grandchildren. Sometimes blessings you have when the owner dies, the wealth perish with them. But God is saying the wealth I want to give you, there is a way for you to maintain it. Pass it to your children. Your children will pass it to their children and their children's children. That it cannot disappear. If you will listen to God. A lot of families, the father will be wealthy. But for you to have this generational blessing, let's read what he's saying. One. In uh, chapter six. I'm reading from verse one. It said, these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you're crossing in to, uh, the Jordan to possess, so that your children and child, their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. How many of us want to enjoy long life? So that you can enjoy a quality and fulfilling life. So it's given the commandment, not that you become a religious fanatic, but there is a, a goal to it. You want to enjoy this life. You want to enjoy the promises of God. You want to see it in the life of your children and your children's children. He said, observe these things. They are not just religious things. They are things that bring you into relationship with God. An obedience of faith. Say obedience of faith. Because your eyes are looking to the promises that cannot fail. You know that as long as you are connected and linked to this God, they cannot fail. So this faith will prompt you to obey this and walk in this path. You walk in a certain way. You walk in this narrow path because your eyes are fixed on what? The promises. He said, verse 3, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. So that what? And that you may increase greatly. Can you see it's not just in the New Testament we have the promise? So that you can increase greatly. You have a business. God wants you to have a chain of businesses. Oh, you are brilliant. God wants you to have so many awards, so many acclamations. Not just, he, he, he's thinking 
on a level that is higher than you. He wants you to prosper so greatly, increase greatly. Now, let's go to verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. The key to this commandment, the focus, the end point is what? Loving God. Loving God passionately. This purpose of coming to church is not just for us to enjoy ourselves. God wants to enjoy him and enjoy his family. Enjoy fellowship with God. Enjoy living and serving God. Don't let your service of God be a duty. Are we hearing me? It's not a duty. It's a love relationship. If it's not a love relationship, you are wasting your time. I'm wasting my time. But it's not a relationship that we do it by human knowledge. That's why Jesus said, unless a man is born of the spirit, you cannot enter into this relationship. Looking at your watch, I hope pastor will finish and you're already thinking of my the dinner at home or your something. Please hurry up. The time is for church. Can we hurry up, please? Because the life of God is not there. When you begin to read this, I, I, I begin to wonder, God is saying, look, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. These instructions I'm giving to you today, they are to be where? In your heart. Hide it. If something is your heart, that means you hide it and it's always there. Something on your heart is always in your front. Something in your heart is treasured. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. That's the wisest man that is telling you and me. My son, tell, okay, say to somebody by your side. Don't say my son to a lady. <laughs> Pay attention to what the Lord is saying. Turn your ears to his word. Verse 21, do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. And pay attention to this, verse 22. For they are life to those who find them. They are what? They are what? To those who find them. That is, those, those who search for them and find them. You just think, oh, I went to Sunday school. Is that all you do about searching? Can you get a degree by just attending school? Two hours in a week. Hello? Can you get your PhD like that? Can you get even your bachelor? Can you even get a diploma like that? And we get come to church two hours in a week, and even that hour, we are, our mind is off with all things. And we want the abundant life. Salvation is free, but certain things you have to pay for. He said, hide it. Do not let them out. For they are large. And health. Not only life, but also healing. We are, we are talking of mental health. I can tell you categorically. And I, I, I know that I've I've, it's worked in my life. It's something I've experienced. I can tell you, I've experienced the depth of it, of mental health issue. And I know the word of God worked. But I also know that fellowship prayed for me. So I know what that it works. Prayer works when people are united, when they know the God they serve. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from, guard what? How do you guard your heart? By the word of God. 
through the word of God that God is telling us. Deuteronomy 6. Hide it within your heart. Day and night. Talk about it to your children. Talk about it to your children's children. How do you, you see? I can tell, you can tell the, 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 where your life is flowing, how you spend your leisure time. How do you spend your spare time? How do you, what do you enjoy doing? We can know what's, com, what's, the, what, what's the harrowhead of your life, of my life. What's the direction of your life? What's your passion? God is saying, make your, my word your passion. I want a life for you that is beyond dream. I want to make you great. But it's not just you. I want it to be flowing from you to your children, to your children's children. How do you do it? Meditate on, your, on the word of God. Make it your passion. Be fanatical about studying it. About meditating on it. Don't joke with it. It's a serious business. Joshua chapter 1 will tell us the same thing. How, how, how do you install a military general to, to lead a nation? And the way to succeed is not by... What is the way for success that God gave Joshua? Open your Bible to Joshua chapter 1. I want us to read verse 6 to 8. We know the verse. We've been reading it. But I want God to open your eyes to it again and again and again and again to see that I need to take this serious this year. I need to move forward this year. I cannot be stay in the same place. I can't be doing it this way I'm doing it last year. And I expect a different result. Six to eight, quickly. God wants you to be what? Strong. To follow God, you need strength. And you need to be courageous. It's not popular. why God is saying be strong and of good courage so that your life of faith will obey. Don't join those who think religion uh, is just coming to church and paying your tithe and then oh there's nothing wrong with me and my boyfriend I, at least we'll marry and you're having sex together. No, so it, it, you cannot sow, sow to the wind. And expect to, what the Bible says, when you sow to the wind, you reap what? A wild wind. The, it, 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 obey. You, you, you store the word of God in your heart. It's not that you can compete in Sunday school and get the first uh, medal, but so that you can obey it and be able to teach it to yourself, teach your children, and teach your children's children so that you can prosper. So that you can pass down generational blessing and not curses. How many Christian mothers and fathers are living generational iniquity and curses? You observe something in your parents. I observed something in my parents. And I said, no way. In fact, I said, let me tell you, my father was a polygamist. But the, when he became a Christian, the thing he began to rank in my ears, so every time we sit and talk, he said, the only thing I regret in life is marrying more than one wife. So I know that I cannot sleepwalk myself into marrying more than one wife. Life and enjoyment cannot mean I have more than one wife. I can listen to my dad. I can see the errors in it. But much more than that, you need some experiments that I observed. You know, I just want to digress a little. In the Sunday school, we're studying the word of God about the power of the Holy Spirit to heal, power of the Holy Spirit, that God wants us to have power. Hmm. The word of God works, and this is why I want to share the testimony. 
I may be hand there because I don't want you to go home and think pastor is just talking theory. I've observed it. I've been fortunate to work with Christians who are when he became born again, my father was a politician on a national level and I just got to know him through the hope of God. But when he became, when he became born again, he challenged the bishop about the Holy Spirit, and the bishop read the Holy Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. He went back to the bishop. He told us that this is for the olden days they are their mother. But Peter can say no. And not me alone. There are many that spoke in tongues. They received the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. So why are you teaching wrongly? But one other thing I want to share with us, and I will come to the main testimony. My dad knew him. He was he was in the working mad one that you know toes scattered, his fingers hot, hot, almost burnt. It became an embarrassment to the family. And they know my father knows this man. Can you please do something about this man? And my father came in. My father was born again that day. He was born again. But he took him to to this this uh, specialist office. He was to feel since the day he started. After a week, he withdrew the man from the Babalao. And do you know this man became completely different? If you ever have children who are given to you, they're not going to go and play with the money and the wife. It's just but all night my father would give me the advice that you can pray. Man, you can pray and ask as you and I might. Kind cannot go without what? And he held on to it and he said, I say, Mr. Lord, why don't you begin to serve God? There are treasures there that you begin to think that God will give you. It works. The word of God what? works. If it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't work for me, it's because it's not studying, it's not seeking diligently. We have treasures in the only place of God. We have treasures in daughter's daughter and your daughter's son. That the world will know that you're faithful. How will they know? When he bless you. 
when the beauty and the greatness of God is seen in your life. But I dare you. Take the word of God seriously. As I start to say, I will hide it in my heart. I will study, I to read, to understand, to hide it in my heart, to obey him, to love him, and so I can see these promises fulfilled in my life and the life of my children. And you know, if you're a mother or a father, no child is too adult for you now to say, Lord, I have messed up. But it's not my fault. It's not the fault of my children. It's my fault. But you will do something. And you can hold him to his word as you start to obey and trust, begin to study the word yourself and begin to claim the promises and begin to invoke the spirit of God upon them. You will begin to see radical Standing in the need of prayer, is me, is me, O Lord, that is in need of prayer. It's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, that is in need of prayer. Is me, is me, O Lord. Of prayer, so I cannot lead you and know what I need to pray. You should know what you want to pray. Can you open your mouth and talk to your father? You can close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes and pray. That you grant me a heart to understand you, a heart that you that you pant and yearn after you, that you stop being lazy to study your word, stop being lazy to memorize your word, stop being lazy and, fe uh, 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 and fearful in obeying your word, stop being lazy in prayer, stop the complaining and grumbling, but come to God, bring the issues and challenges to God in the place of prayer. one promise of God will be found missing in my life. No. I will not take the promises to the grave. I will receive it. They will manifest in my life. I will walk in them. In the name of Jesus. I will partake of it. I will enjoy the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, I will pass down generational blessings to my children and my children's children as the Lord liveth. The one who cannot fail the one who can who will do exceedingly abundantly all that I'm praying, all that I think, all that I imagine by the power of the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you, Faithful One. For your word says, your eyes look to and fro, the towards all the earth, to show yourself strong on behalf of those who diligently seek you, those who are loyal to you. I pray this hour, Lord, that you find our hearts loyal to you. That it will not be our mouth that is just talking of Oh, we are intimate with God and our heart will not be so far away from you. But the Lord grant us a heart that will cling to you this hour in Jesus' name. That you might fulfill your covenant promises in our lives. That the beauty of God and the promises of the Most High might manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen.
testifying this morning because I've seen the work of God in this house. I want to thank God that uh, today is, is to me to be quite honest with you. I was moved. I was moved. Starting from the Bible study, and I pray that God will continue to bless the people that He's using. Um, worshiping, Joyce, God will increase, increase the oil in your head. Amen. It will expand your vocal cord. <laughs> you will sing for great people. Thank you, Father. I want to thank God for my life. Um, there are things I did not expect I could do. And one day, it's like you chime in to my God. And I sat down. I said, Father, is it that the people that go out to fast, do they have three heads or four heads? And I said, you know what, Father? I will join this program. And I'll finish that fasting with them. God did it. And he took me all through. And while he was taking me that journey, he was like revealing things to me. He said, food? He said, you will see that food. You, you, you will drink just with a cup of water. That food is nothing. My food will be enough. And I, I thank God for that. And I want to just thank God for my family. He's been a provider. <laughs> Even when there is none, he provides. When you, sometimes as in our own human eyes, you will look, where will this thing come from? You know, my wife was talking to me yesterday. I said, Papa, the account is zero. I said, not zero. And you say, hi, how are we going to do this storage? The money is going to finish now. If you, why she was talking to me? <laughs> I just keep, so I just keep praising. And the next thing he came and she said, ah, in my account. I said, I put money in your account. <laughs> in my mind, I said, God, you see you? <laughs> I don't doubt you anything. So I just want to encourage everyone that God listen to our prayers. Is here. Thank you so much. Cheers. Testif um, an appointment this week. So, and um, of course, I'm here. And there was something I, I was planning to do for Saturday. And uh, cut a long story short, um, just in the morning, around the late morning, I just um, it just came to my heart. Start looking for the things you need to present at your in, in, in appointment this week, brethren, sister, uncle. I look, I look, after a while I'm crying, and even when I'm telling myself, what, what are you crying for? <laughs> you better wipe your eyes so you can see properly. <laughs> Afternoon reach, I don't find a single document. And it's not like, it's not a place that you can say, hey, don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll, as in you've already spoilt your testimony, so to speak. And then I remembered, even this Saturday, self, there's a project I need to finish. So anyway, I, after a while, I just I, I, I spoke to God, and I had peace, and then I did the project that I actually came, that I, that I had set aside Saturday to do. Brethren, just as I finished that project, which I believe was even done with speed, because I was like, you can't lose in two ways, though. <laughs> anyway, so I finished that project, and just as I sat down, the Lord directed my eyes to start tidying up a corner of the house. Brethren, I found the paper I found the, the document so. But I want to testify because it is God. Yes. And also for us to know that when God is doing stuff in our lives, the enemy is not full handle. He's looking for ways to frustrate. And it's not like you could say it's the enemy. It's actually, you can't even pinpoint anything. But it was meant to frustrate. And I want to thank God that the Lord nullified the plan of the wicked. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. Yes. Any more? Yes. Uh, Sister Hattie. Okay. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to testify to God's glory. As at last week, let's say last, over one week, we are, we are all up, I won't say down with ill health. You know, it was start, it started with Ivana. Ivana, you know, infected Derek. Derek's own was so severe. If I go to an extent, I had to take them. They stopped going to school, take them to the to the GP after all said and done because Derek, you know, once, once he comes to substance, he affects his breath. And when he's sleeping at night, you can see that the child is struggling. And I know that, you know, once he gets to this extent, it's an antibiotic that we help to cl uh, clear that. I got there and we didn't have any because my doctor brother have tried to like recommend the one he we had, didn't, it wasn't really working. Got to GP, they said there was nothing that the child was just look at it and I, ah, that this thing have is, you know, stayed for a while and there's a lot of muco coming out from his eye. In fact, in the morning when he wakes up like this, it's, like, it's so irritating, accompanied with the uh, uh, breathing challenge. After all said and done, I tried to convince him. It looked as if I was, you know, maybe I was saying that the GP didn't know what to. I said, I'm also a medical person. And this, my child, I have this, you know, what is obtainable and this we just, but I tried to just to get something, but nothing. It seems as if we wasted our time. We came back and continue our trust God and, you know, it's, it didn't really get better, but in fact, my husband, I joined. My husband joined, it was just fetchy that was left. I said, this time last Sunday, I just, in fact, on Saturday night, I was at work. I was just pulling myself. It seems as if I was, I was going down and taking care of someone. Meanwhile, I'm going down. I came back, it was, but I give God, I'm here to testify to the glory of God that we are all perfect by God's grace. But Fetchy now is perfect. It's more perfect. Amen. God be the glory. the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The God will perfect it in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. Any more testimony? Yeah, you book for your job. <laughs> How has it been? It's good. We praise God. Any more? For all of us. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank God um, regarding my job. I started off as a teaching assistant and one of the science teachers at the school was leaving. So then they asked me if I would like to take the role. So I'll be starting two weeks as a science teacher. So I'm just so grateful <laughs> to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. God is awesome. It says when you are quiet, he's walking in the background. <laughs> it's amazing. I want to join my husband to say thank you, Divine Father. He's a provider. He's a healer. He guides us. Ah, even when we don't call him, he knows what we want. He's even ahead of us. So I... I really thank him for protecting my children, for the challenges, because through these challenges, I've learned. I've learned lessons more than the 40 years, last 40 years of my life. So I want to say thank, thank you, Jesus. And I suppose he's taught me to trust as well, that it's just not by my effort doesn't matter how humans, how we try. It's only by believing in him. So I thank him for being there for us, for coming forth for us. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Divine Father, we want to thank you for your guidance, for your miracles. Father, for the challenges as well. We want to thank you for every day that you're with us. We want to thank you for the Holy Spirit with us. We want to thank you for everything, big and small, Divine Father. We appreciate you. Father, this day we commit the week into your hands. Father, we pray that you will continue to be with us. 
Father, you will continue to guide us, teach us your way, so that the blessings will be ours and we'll be able to pass it on to our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. weekly and monthly program as follows. We cover the studies on Tuesdays from 7 p.m. followed by Holy Communion. Wednesday worship night is every week from 7 p.m. Monthly prayer meeting is the last Friday of the month from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. This month will be the 23rd of February. Sunday school teachers meeting is two weekly on Fridays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Women's prayer meeting is on the third Saturday of the month from 8 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. Next meeting will be the 17th of February. Youth meeting on the fourth Saturday of every month from 5 p.m. Children's Sunday School is at 6 p.m. Sunday evening. All are welcome into our programs in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand for our closing in and we do the offering as we sing. living Jesus. Daddy, we just want to thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for this offering. Say, Father, accept our offering in Jesus' powerful name we pray. I share the grace in fellowship by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Watch what? Uphold me according to your word. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Psalm 119, verse 116. Just 